For this project, I've created a Neolithic village on the east coast of Ireland, 30 miles from Dublin at or around 3200 to 2900 BC. This village was created by Stone Age farmers who were thriving because of the fertile land of the Boyne Valley, which I've recreated using the Plains Biome in Minecraft. The Boyne River is a lowland river that cuts across the valley and provides a water source for the village. The village is also located on the coast of the Irish Sea, which is part of the North Atlantic Ocean, and the body of water that separates the island of Ireland from England. 5,800 years ago, during the Neolithic period, Ireland was colonized by people from Iberia who descended from Anatolian farmers. DNA confirms that they migrated to the island from western France, and these Neolithic farmers came to dominate the existing Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, but did not kill them. Instead, they married with them. The DNA of these Mesolithic people differed from the people in Britain and Europe at that time, likely because the rough waters of the Irish Sea was a barrier after the landmass separated, until the Neolithic period. Early Neolithic people built rectangular timber houses around 3750 BC. Most houses that have been discovered are 6 to 12 meters long and 4 to 8 meters wide and are constructed using split oak planks and posts sunk vertically into the ground. They were made out of woven branches covered with mud, or a combination of the two. The ends were supported by a large beam leaning against the ridge of the roof. I cannot show this in Minecraft because there are no angular blocks. The roof itself was made from timber beams with thatch covering it. The small hole in the roof allowed smoke to escape because, unlike the Mesolithic Irish, the Neolithic farmers lit their fires and cooked indoors. Most of the houses are rectangular in shape, although some of the shorter examples are almost square like this one. This long space inside is usually divided up by one or more internal walls, which must have structured the organization of internal space. One larger, sometimes central room, along with one more smaller spaces, within many of these houses shows that different kind, different activities were being carried out in different parts of the building, with larger spaces used as living quarters for a family, and smaller areas may be used for storage or for housing animals. The floor area of many buildings probably sheltered members of a family or kin group, a dozen or more people in some cases. Neolithic farmers may have lived in larger communities than the Mesolithic Irish did, with a number of families living in a cluster of houses, with perhaps a larger multi-purpose building in the center. There is a recurring pattern of two or three buildings clustered together, usually one or two similar sized buildings side by side with the third. Smaller buildings located a short distance away. This seems like different buildings had different functions, maybe one or more houses with a smaller work building or store. Here is the shop. And here are the two buildings. Ah. 
As the Neolithic period progressed, houses seemed to have been oval or circular in shape. The Neolithic structures and groups were different from the Mesolithic family groups, who would also live in rivers and lakes, but constructed houses made from animal skin spread over a bowl-shaped timber frame. Unlike the Neolithic, the Mesolithic homes were not permanent. The people moved around a lot from site to site, and the skins from the house were brought with them to the new site. Fire was used in a couple ways by these people. Neolithic settlers from the north, likely from Scotland, set the forest on fire, which made it easier to clear with stone axes to build permanent farms. <laughs> Again, a small ho hole in the roof allowed smoke to escape the house, because unlike the Mesolithic Irish, the Neolithic farmers lit their fires and cooked in wood. Meat was cooked on a spit over the fire or by placing it directly in the fire. It is also possible that the meat was preserved through smoking or salting. Fire was also used to make pottery. Neolithic pots were found in Ireland were usually made by coiling clay to build a simple pot shape. These were then smoothed down. Some pots have been decorated by pressing stones, sticks, or even fingers into the wet clay. The pot is then hardened by placing it in a, a hot fire. The pots were used for many things, like storing food, or pot filled with a small amount of fat and set on fire for simple land. Flint was used by Mesolithic people, but we don't need this anymore. Neolithic Irish used porcelain, a rock that is tougher than the flint used more, fish used more efficiently for making axes, digging holes, etc. They found that they could chop down much larger trees than they could with flint tools, and this allowed them to more efficiently clear Ireland's upper upland forests. They cut their wheat using a scythe made from a branch with sharpened porcelain knife. This wheat was ground by hand using a rounded stone on top of a larger grindstone. This was then used to make bread, which was baked on top of a flat stone placed in the fire. Flint javelin heads, arrowheads, blades, knives, and scrappers were also used for a bunch of functions. In 2016, the remains of a 5,000 year old, year old log boat were discovered in the river Boyne near this village. The boat consists of a 3 meter length of wood, which would have formed the base of the boat. Is it, it is estimated that it was originally more than 4 meters long, shaped out of the trunk of an old oak tree using a stone axe. These boats were likely used for transporting people along the river and transporting materials and stones. Ireland is on the edge of Europe, so it has a limited number of animal and plant species as a result of its early separation from European landmass and its position. Only 14 species of mammals were present during the Mesolithic time. The Irish hare, the Irish stoat, the pygmy shrew, the red squirrel, the fox, the badger, the otter, the pine marten, the red deer, the wild pig, the wolf, the brown bear, and the wild cat, and the lynx. Of these 14 species, only two were traditionally hunted as food, the wild pig and red deer. Freshwater fish were also limited to only 11 species, mostly through mostly trout and salmon. This is the salmon.
Even though Mesolithic sites were mostly located on the coasts or rivers, as well as island sites, where there was a lot of fish and shellfish, fish was not a big part of the Irish Mesolithic diet. 98% of the, of the mammal bones were found to be wild pig, which was the primary source of food. With extra food from water lily, seed, water lily seeds, nuts, fruits, fungi, fish, mostly salmon, and shellfish, the Neolithic Irish settlers were hunting animals, especially wild pigs, gathering wild plants and shellfish at, and fishing in lakes, rivers, and the sea. Hazelnut shells have been found in large quantities at several sites, and also wild pear, raspberry seeds, crab apple, dandelions, and fungi. Wild pigs were the only people native to Ireland. The settlers, the settlers brought with them goats, goats and sheep. It is believed that these animals were transported across the Irish Sea on wooden on wooden rafts towed by skim boats or dugout canoes, hollow tree trucks. They also brought wheat and barley, which they planted in their farms. Wheat became the, dom the dominant crop with barley and flax. The earliest cereals date to just after 3750 BC. The most important cereal grown by these first farmers was emmer wheat. Forged foods played an important role in Neolithic Ireland, proven by burnt nutshells and the fruit remains from the archaeological excavations when people started farming. They did not abandon or do. Instead, they made use of a wide variety of foods, both farmed and gathered. A variety of nuts, fruits, and leafy greens were in the Neolithic diet. These communities were mainly farmers and may have a large amount of land. Some examples are half a square kilometer. A series of stone field boundaries have been discovered. Axes from this area have been found across I Ireland and as far away as southern England. This means there were also traders who traded with Neolithic Britons. This is a trader. There's two llamas. Neolithic period, people hunted, fished, and gathered foods. The introduction of farming to Ireland by the Neolithic farmers was a hugely important shift, not just with food, new types of houses, and making pottery, but big, but new monuments were constructed for the dead. This village of farmers, specifically in this area, thanks to advances in farming, were able to spend t time creating one of the most important legacies left by the Neolithic farmers, megaliths, or large earth constructions used mostly as burial places. Newgrange. The farmers in the village constructed Newgrange, a passage tomb in Country Meath. According to Carbon 14 dating techniques, Newgrange was constructed around 3200 BC. This means it is at least 600 years older than the Giza pyramids in Egypt and 1000 years older than Stonehenge. It is the most famous passage tomb in the world because it has been restored to look as it did originally. Beautiful carving, carved stones at the entrance makes it a worldwide attraction. Beautiful stones. The Newgrange Monument consists of a large mound 
built of alternating layers of earth and stones with grass growing on the top. A reconstructed walls of white quartz stones st studded with large rounded cobbles covering parts of the circumference. It consists of about 200,000 tons of material. The mound is 85 meters, 279 feet wide as its widest point and 12 meters, 39 feet high and covers 4,500 square meters, 1.1 acres of ground. Today, around the perimeter of the mound is a circle of standing stones. 12 standing stones survived out of a possible original 35. Most archaeologists suggest that they were added later during the Bronze Age, so I didn't add them. Inside the mound is a chambered passage, which has an entrance on the southeastern side of the monument. The passage is 19 meters, 60 feet, or about a third of the way into the center of the structure. At the end of the passage are three small chambers of a large center chamber with a high vaulted roof. Each of the smaller chambers has a large flat basin stone which contains the bones of the dead. The walls of this passage are made up of large stone slabs. Newgrange contains various examples of graphic Neolithic rock art carved into its stone surfaces. Archaeologists have guessed about the meaning of the designs, whether they are decorative or symbolic. It's been estimated that Newgrange could have been built within five years, based on the number of people during the Neolithic period and the amount of time they could have spent building it rather than farming. Other scholars say 30 years. Excavations have shown both burnt and unburnt human bones in the passage, showing that human corpses were placed in it. The unburnt bones come from at least two separate people, but much of the skeletons are missing, and what was left had been scattered around the passage. Grave items were deposited with the bodies inside the passage and included seven marbles for pendants, two beads, a used flint blank, a bone chisel, and fragments of bone pins. <laughs> DNA analysis found that bones, the most decorated chamber, were from a man whose parents were first degree relatives, possibly brother and sister. In history, this was usually found in royal dynasties headed by god kings like the pharaohs of ancient Egypt who married each other to keep the royal bloodline pure. This together with the riches, richness of the burial, burial could mean that the similar elite group were responsible for building Newgrange and that it was a royal tomb. There have been many ideas about its original purpose. Many archaeologists believe that, it, that the monument had religious significance as a place of worship for a cult of the dead or for an astronomical-based faith. Some guess that the sun was an important part of the religious beliefs of the Neolithic people who built it. One, I one idea was that the room was designed for a ritual capturing of sun rays on the shortest day of the year, the winter solstice, which might have signaled that the days would start to get longer again. Once a year, the, at the winter solstice, the sun shines directly down the long passage, illuminating the inner chamber and revealing a, the carvings inside, notably the three spirals on the front wall of the chamber. This lasts for about 17 minutes. The sunlight enters the passage through an opening known as, the, as a roof box, directly above the main entrance. Although solar alignments are not uncommon among passage graves, Newgrange is one of 
the few to contain the additional roof box features. So now that it's at the roof box, it creates light all the way down here for 17 minutes. Without technology, this is amazing. One pro of this village is the huge barrier of the Irish Sea that made it difficult for invaders to come and attack them. Another pro is that they are interested in creating art and pottery. And the last pro of this village is that they were able to build that huge monument that timed the rising of the sun on the winter solstice. Some cons of the village, or just being an island, is a limited amount of animal and plants for the diet. Another con is the cold climate where it rained a lot. The last con is that marrying your sibling is absolutely disgusting. Like, who would ever want to do that? This is Aiden Macinta's 2024 Neolithic Project. Goodbye.